Hello, this is Jared Hicks from Monsoon Solutions, and I'd just like to take you through the features of Power Tool and basic operations. Uh, just kind of show you what the different things on this interface mean and the options you have to, to view the data you're recording. So when you first launch Power Tool, uh, you've already installed Power Monitor and you've got all that good, uh, it's going to pop up with this screen right here. Um, the easiest way to tell if you have the drivers and everything installed properly is going to be this little box down in the corner here. As long as these are populated with something similar to what you see here, uh, your hardware revision is either going to be F or G, uh, and then obviously your firmware version should be something similar to this. If there's zeros or question marks, there's something wrong with your driver installation. But to kind of go through the basic interface here, uh, most of this is going to be dominated by this graph you see here. Uh, this is where your live measurements are going to be displayed. So as you're taking measurements, it's going to populate this graph with uh, all the instantaneous measurements and things like that uh, that are going on. And you can manipulate this in a few different ways, and I'll kind of show you that here in a minute. We're just going to go through the different sections of information available here uh, and kind of what each button does. So as we start in the top right here, uh, fairly self-explanatory, it's going to show you your uh, voltage that you have currently set, and it's going to display this as long as the uh, voltage is not currently enabled on the power monitor itself. So if we change the voltage here, I know, for example, I'm going to need a, uh, 4 volts here. I'm going to be testing on a mobile phone real quick. So we set that to 4, and as I click Vout Enable, it's going to enable the voltage on my device, uh, and then it's also going to put some blanks here, and this will now serve as an instantaneous voltage measurement for uh, during measurement. Uh, so as you're taking samples, it's going to populate this with the current voltage uh, that's being measured from the power monitor itself. And so we'll disable that for now. I uh, Just below that, you see this inst current. Uh, it's going to be similar to what the voltage turns into. It's going to turn into a live current uh, measurement. And so that's going to be the momentary instantaneous current, just kind of an average. Uh, you can get more specific data than this, but if you're just looking for kind of moment-to-moment -moment general usage details, you can check up in here. Uh, below that, we have our capture stats. And so this is going to be kind of overall statistics of your entire test. I'm um, going to give you your overall time, the number of samples collected, total consumed energy, et cetera, et cetera. And this is going to be over the entire time span that you've been measuring, rather than, uh, for example, one individual second. If you want to see a smaller subset of that data, I will show you a way to do that a little bit later once we have some information on here. Uh, you also have three different channels here. So if you're measuring on something, on something other than the main channel, you would select the appropriate channel here. And it would uh, change these statistics depending on which channel you have. Uh, the cursors I'm also going to show you a little bit later, but it's a useful way to identify uh, how large peaks are, time differences, or differences between uh, a high and low peak, kind of things like that. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, below that, we have our capture triggers. And so you can see right now I have it set up to start after the average current exceeds 300 milliamps and to stop after 30 seconds. And so if we click this button, we can come in here and you can set a bunch of these different triggers uh, to kind of do different things on the testing if you want it to be a little bit more uh, automatic rather than having to do everything manually. If you want to do it manually, that's totally fine. Um, you can just set these both to manual, and it'll essentially start recording measurements as soon as you hit the Run button, and it won't stop until you hit the Stop button. Uh, the Code button in here, this generates a trigger code for use with our command line tool, uh, which can be handy if you're running multiple power monitors at once, or you just don't want to have the GUI tool uh, using up a bunch of system resources. You can use our command line tool to do the exact same testing, and you would use the trigger codes from this, or if you wanted to create your own, we have details in the manual for, uh, for trigger codes. But we're not going to worry about that too much right now. Uh, well, with that, we have our run and stop buttons, pretty self-explanatory, and reset is going to reset the connection with the power monitor. Uh, shouldn't really need to do, this too, uh, to do this too often, but the button or the option is available if you need it. Uh, jumping over to the left side here, uh, we can see our voltage source options. And the reason a couple of these are grayed out right now is because they are not currently selected on our displayed channels options. And so if we wanted to say take measurements through the auxiliary channel, we would select it to be displayed. 
and then we would tell the software that the auxiliary channel is going to be our voltage source or even if you're taking measurements through the auxiliary channel, you can still use our main channel as the voltage source for that and kind of bounce between. Um, the only thing you can't do, if you have all three selected, it's gonna to default to main because you can't actually take measurements on all of them at the same time. And so in this instance, we would just have USB on its own. But we're gonna be using the main channel. Uh, below this, you see USB pass-through. This is gonna be used uh, primarily to keep the USB port on the front of the device active. If you need to be, uh, for example, sending data while running a test, if you're wanting to see power draw on a data transfer, um, it can also be used to keep the voltage active even while you're taking measurements on the main channel. Uh, so if, you're, if you need to power something through USB but you're still taking measurements through the main channel, that's something you can do. Sometimes a uh, cell phone might need to see voltage through the charge circuit in order to power up, kind of a couple things like that. There are some instances where it comes in handy. If you just leave it on auto, most of the time it'll take care of itself. Um, when on the auto setting, as soon as you start taking measurements on the main channel, it's gonna disable the voltage um, on the USB channel just so it doesn't interfere with the, with the settings, or sorry, with the measurements. And next to that, we have our displayed measurements box. Um, this will make a little bit more sense when you have some measurements actually taken. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit more of that later. But essentially, these are the values which will be displayed on the graph, and then also serves as uh, marking which values we want to be exported when you're exporting data to a CSV file. All right, so right here we can see our restore defaults button. It's going to do exactly what it says. Uh, this is going to be the default view. When you click it, it's just going to reset everything back. And we're going to fix this a little bit here. Uh, nah, I don't need minutes. We're going to put that back on seconds. And put this at five. Yeah, this should work. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm going to need a much bigger scale than this. Uh, next to the default button, you can see the parameters option. Most of this you really don't need to worry about. There's not a whole lot of reason to come into this menu. Um, the biggest uh, couple of features in here, I would say, are the power up current limit, the runtime, and then the fan temperature limit. So the power up current limit is going to be when you initially turn on the voltage, uh, if it exceeds this current value, it's going to trip our over current protection circuit, and it's going to disable the voltage automatically if it's seeing an amperage above this value. So if you have something that you know is going to immediately draw a higher amperage than this, uh, but you know that it's okay, you can bring this value up, and that way it won't trigger the circuit. Um, same with the runtime current limit. If it sees a, an amperage higher than this value, as you're taking a test, it's gonna trip that protection circuit and disable the voltage so as to protect your device. Uh, the temporary directory, this is just where the uh, measurement's gonna be stored on a temporary basis. It records everything from the device to a temporary of a file before it saves it permanently, and this will be the location of that uh, file. And then the fan temperature limit, if you want to change when the fan actually turns on, you can alter that here. Um, I would recommend keeping it at the default value, but if you'd actually prefer to it uh, for it to come in earlier or later, you can change that here. Uh, just know it may affect your device in the long run if you uh, change this degree limit up, just simply because the device might not be getting the proper cooling at that point. So we're going to pop back out of there. And to the right, we have our graph scaling. Uh, fairly self-explanatory. This is going to be where you change your display units and the scaling for the graph itself. So if you have something, you know, if you're not worried about milliwatts and you'd rather just see, you know, a very general idea of how many watts are being drawn, things like that, you can alter all those settings here. Uh, we're going to turn power back on. Um, and so this is fairly simple. The way I have this set up right now, I actually have an offset of negative 100 on my current, simply because it's easier to see you know, a low current around zero when you've got some buffer below the zero point. Uh, below that, we've got our drop samples and dropped connections. Uh, so if for whatever reason your power monitor drops its USB connection during a test and then reconnects automatically, you're going to see that number here. Um, it will typically stay zero. And the drop samples should also be a fairly, fairly low number. Um, if you're seeing a very large value here, it could indicate some other issue going on. Um, Particularly if it's sitting at 65, 535, that's the maximum value allowed for this. 
if you're seeing that, odds are you're dropping way more samples than that, and it's going to cause a lot of different issues. Uh, primarily, it's going to result in timing issues on your graph. Um, so if you're seeing that number, there is something weird going on, and you may need to contact us for that. To the right of that, you can see uh, this little data box here. Um, the capture files, once you save them out to our PT5 format, you can reopen them inside the graph here. Uh, so if we pull this up, this is a previous test that was run. And so you can see uh, kind of a general idea here. Let's get a little bit, uh, let's get a little bit bigger scaling here. Okay. And so you can kind of see the peaks and valleys and all of this. Uh, and then this is where you would save out your current test file. If you wanted to save out whatever live test you were running, you'd use the save and then export is going to be where you export the data to a CSV, or you can also do it to PT5 or PT4 format. Uh, PT4 was used with our older device. Uh, however, if you're still using software that automatically parses that format, you can use that here. CSV will be handy if you want to take that into an outside program like Excel to do your own data processing. Uh, and you can also alter the granularity so you're not dealing with so many samples. Or uh, if we come in here, we can select a specific part of the time graph and we can export just that selection. And uh, to kind of show you that's, that's the selection stuff, when you do this, it's also going to alter the average stats here. So it's going to restrict itself to whatever section was uh, you selected. And so here it was about one second worth of uh, samples, as you can see. And it just kind of gives you the average power current, et cetera, of your current select, currently selected area. All right, and to show a little bit more uh, with some of the things we, we went through before, the cursors I can kind of demonstrate here. So. If we go to the current uh, cursor, we can uh, say select a peak there. It's going to tell us the exact value of that peak, the exact timestamp of it. And then if we go to the delta cursor and we select it, uh, and let's go to, we'll go to this valley. It's going to tell us the exact current value of that valley, the timestamp of that current or of that measurement. And then it's going to tell us the delta between our uh, first value and the second and then the, the time difference. And so that's pretty handy if you're wanting to uh, see some sp uh, spikes and things like that, if you wanted to identify where in the exported data you needed to look for a value. And we'll go ahead and turn these back off. Uh, and then down here, the copy graph, copy stats, copy screen, is just gonna take screenshots of the Power Tool window uh, if you wanted to paste those into Paint or something like that to, to uh, save those screenshots. And then the last thing, uh, we have the stats window button. That's just going to bring up a larger window of the same stats as here. And then it's also going to give you a larger instantaneous current measurement. So if you're doing a presentation or something like that, and you needed just an easier to read uh, set of data, you can pull this up and have that as a live view. All right, and we're going to go ahead and fire up a test real quick. Uh, so I've got my voltage set at four. I've currently got a cell phone hooked up to this, so we're going to go ahead and turn on the voltage. And we're going to hit run on this. And it automatically started taking measurements as soon as it saw a current over 300 milliamps. And so that was basically the phone charger waking up. And so we'll go ahead and fire up the phone here. All right, and we can see it going into the startup procedure here. And the way I have this set up, it should stop after 30 seconds. And there we go. It finished off its testing here. And so you can kind of see the general data that came through in that 30 second period. And so the voltage right now is still enabled. As you can see, we still have this right here and uh, the instant curtain and everything. If I wanted to disable the uh, voltage, I can just do that here, or I can leave it running. Um, especially with a cell phone, it's kind of nice just to be able to, to leave that running so that you can rerun tests without having to restart the phone. And uh, you can also leave the voltage enabled if you want to exit power tool. It'll give you the option when you're exiting the software. So that's a, 
that's kind of a brief overview of the Power Tool software. If you have more specific questions, feel free to email us at PM Support uh, or the email addresses that are going to be listed in the, in the description. We also have a Power Monitor manual, which is available on our website, and it's also included in the installation for Power Tool. It has a lot of uh, more in depth details on the software itself and how to get tests set up. And again, if you have any other specific questions, uh, we are available and we'll help you out as best we can. Thanks for watching.